So we're gonna go over exercise one. Uh, this is for chapter three. We're gonna go over this exercise where we're adding an FAQ page to our application under the path slash FAQ. So as I said, this doesn't need a lot of content, but we wanna make sure it's different from other pages that we can verify that you know, it is the actual FAQ page. So we're gonna use this home function as a, you know, as, as basically a guidance for what we're going to be doing here. We, we wanna use it to create a new page and we wanna render some HTML, so this is basically the same thing we're doing for the home page and the contact page, but we want it to be a new page. So using that as our guidance, we can type func FAQ is what we're going to call this function. We know that it needs to take a response writer and a request as the first two arguments. And then we also know that we want to write this header dot set content type. And we want this to be text slash HTML because we're still returning HTML. Now I do want to say that moving forward, um, not this chapter, but in future chapters, we know I know that writing this w.header.set is something that can get tedious after a while. There's no reason why we should have to write it every single time we're rendering a page. So in the future, we're going to look at ways to sort of get rid of that. Not it'll still happen, but it'll be something that you know happens more automatically or allows us to not have to write the code every single time. And you know we'll make it a little bit easier to render our pages, and we'll we'll do that while we're doing templates. So all of this will make you know writing HTML in general. We won't have to write HTML inside of strings like this. We're going to find ways to do all of that, you know, without writing all of this this crud over and over again, without needing to you know write really really sloppy code that's hard to test and hard to change. But for now, I really just wanted to stick with writing it all out clearly because I really want you to understand what's going on and all the different pieces. All right, so we have the format.fprint, and this is where we're writing the HTML. So I'm going to put an h1 tag and say frequently asked questions. We'll close the h1. Um, here is a list of questions that our users commonly ask. So we'll close the paragraph tag, and that should be everything we read right now, need right now. Um, if you wanted, you could use bullet lists or other HTML elements to sort of show the questions, but I don't see any point in doing that right now. We just want to make sure the FAQ page works, and this is enough different content that we should know that for sure. So I'm going to save this, and then I'm going to go down here to the main function. So we've been doing this so far. Uh, we've got this r.handle func for the home page, and we've got one for the contact page. So what we're doing for the FAQ page is pretty much the same thing. We're going to call r.handlefunk. We're going to do slash FAQ is the URL for it, or the path, not the URL. And we're going to use FAQ as the handler function that we want to call. So these two don't have to be the same name. I want to make sure that's clear. We can name this blah, and we can name this blah. You know, this has to match this name, but they don't have to match the actual path. So I'm going to go ahead and keep it blah for the time being, just so you can see that. I want to start our server. And I want to go to the FAQ page. And you can see that we have this frequently asked questions. You know, it, this is definitely a different page. But we also want to make sure that none of our other pages changed. So our contact page still works. And our home page still works. And similarly, we can go to just gibberish and we get a 404 page. So everything's working as expected. Uh, now that we have that all, I'm going to go ahead and show you one of the easiest ways to sort of get rid of any changes you have is to stash your files. Um, stashing it is usually a way to sort of set it aside for later and then you can always get it back. But I also use it as a way to just sort of get rid of whatever current changes are there and go back to a clean master branch. So I'm gonna diff real quick just to show you that we've got this blah function that's added and it's we're using it here for the FAQ page. Um, so I'm going to add all the files and I'm going to stash them. So git stash, we'll do the stash. And you can see that we've gotten rid of that. Uh, we're, our head is now back to the last commit. And if we go to our code, you can see that all of that stuff we just wrote is gone. So we've done the exercise and now it is gone, so we don't actually need it. But if you do need it back, you can type git stash apply, and it'll take all the code that you had and it'll apply it back to the current branch you're on. So I'm actually going to go ahead and create 3.8, uh, adding an FAQ page. 
Um, I'm going to create a branch for this because I want to be able to share this code with everybody. But this isn't something that you necessarily have to do on your own because you might not want this to be actually persisted. All right, now I can check out master and I'm not going to merge this in. It's just going to be something that, you know, stays there in case somebody wants to reference it. So you can see that whenever I checked back out to master, it actually got rid of all those changes until I merged them back in.